What do you think is your favorite song to play? Actually, I love our originals, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Eric wrote um, the lyrics to and I wrote the music to. Um, uh, it's a song, it's called I Miss Those Days. And um, oh. it gets an extremely uh, good response from oh. everybody. Well, that one might make me cry <laughs> because it might remind me of the good old days, mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly, yeah. and I'm oh, gonna, right. if you don't mind, I'll let Eric speak to that because sure. he wrote the lyrics to it. So okay. I'm gonna pass well, the mic over. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you that. Mm -hmm. No, we, um, I, I, songs come to me, sometimes it comes to me as just, you know, a lyric. Sometimes it comes with the full tune, right? But in this case, I'm laying in bed one night, and I got the song in my head, and it's, you know, it's, it's by growing up in California in the 70s, oh. and all the freedom you had back then, and the great bands, and, sure. uh, you know, Cheech and Chong, and just everything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Boone's Farm, and it just, everything was coming into my head. Um, Southern California. Okay. I moved there, um, Laguna Beach back in, uh, 1973. Oh, okay. Perfect yeah. Time. Yeah, wow. it's always a perfect time. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was uh, 13 years old, and uh, so everything's just popping. You know, Alice Cooper was my favorite artist. He was the first concert I ever went to nice. at that forum in LA. Yeah. So yeah, Englewood Forum. So just uh, great times. Deep Purple was my second concert. So you look at these bands I grew up with. So you Bob's, saw Richie Blackmore. And, um, and Ian, yes. Ian Gillian on, on lead vocals. I saw Bob Seger and Black Sabbath together. Yeah, back, right. Back then. Together. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of mishmash bands myself yeah. together. My first concert was Duke and the Drivers, which was a local Boston band. I'm from Boston. Yeah. And Aerosmith. And Aerosmith. I go way back with those guys from when they played in clubs. But I lived in Manhattan Beach uh, in 1977. I moved to, Jan no, 1978, January of 1978. I moved to Manhattan Beach, the Rosecrans exit off the 405 freeway. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I should have, I wasn't as into music. I was, I've always been into music. I grew up in music. Right. And, and, but I wasn't into as much music as I am in, in my later life. And i had fortunate enough to meet members and work with members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and such like yeah. that. So it's interesting when you talk about writing a song, because Paul McCartney would say he'll get something in his head and he can be in the middle of the night. He immediately gets out of bed and goes to the piano and plays what he's heard or writes down what he's thought. Right. Is that the same process that you're talking about? Well, I'm laying in bed. I got a, I, you know, I, at that point I got a notepad. I'm just writing down lyrics, right? And this was, I miss those days. And my wife's going, hey, turn off the light, turn off the light. I'm going, hey, the song is in my head. I got the, I got the tune, I got everything. So I started just, I finished the whole song. I wrote every lyric. Uh, and then I, I had the tune in my head. I went and recorded it the next day, just kind of sung it. And uh, then I hit it with the band. And uh, those guys said, all right, let's put it together. And they... They arranged it and it came out awesome. So it became our first, I think our first, Single. actually our first original was written off a of jam. These guys were just jamming. Right. And I put some lyrics to it and that became uh, uh, Kicking this in SRV. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, you know, jam bands, like for, for instance, that's when you go into the history of the Almond Brothers, which is one of my favorite bands of all time. Got to see them live a new number of oh, times. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, you go into the history of that, that's how they. They kind of put that stuff together, uh, you know, just jamming and playing, and, and all of a sudden something formed out of that. Yeah, we'll still do a blues jam. Like uh, Byron will host a blues jam at his house, and we'll just all sit down in the studio garage, and uh, different people will be invited. His brother will come. Is uh, John, food? his mentor, will show up. Is there food involved? Always. There's okay. definitely beer involved. <laughs> but um, no, we just hang out and just just somebody say what key. Greg start the bass in whatever key, and we'll just go. Yeah, and it's just a lot of fun. I started playing harmonica recently because I felt like I needed to do something else. I've always wanted to it's do really something good. else with the band. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't believe I didn't start trying to play that thing earlier because it turns out it wasn't all that hard. How old were you when you started performing in front of an audience? Um, probably 17, 18. And, and that was in California? Yeah, I was in a band called Roxas. It was my first band. And what genre of music was that? It was uh, cover rock, just, you know, about April Wine and, uh, you know, Aerosmith and stuff like right, that right, back right. in the 70s. Right. Did you ever make the whiskey or anything like that? No, no, hell no. No, in fact, um, I got kicked out of the band because of a chick. Because, you know, I used to, you know, <laughs> women, it was like band. It's women, always a band, chick. Women. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, women are with the band. <laughs> Finally, yeah, my Yoko took me out of the band. And, and then I wasn't in another band. 
until I played with this guy years and years. Oh, later. really? Wow. I was out of. I was doing karaoke just to keep my chops up, right? So I did karaoke for, <laughs> I hate for karaoke. twenty five years. Well, it kept me. Well, in I'm shape. Yeah, no, it's me because I hosted karaoke off and on yeah. for twenty something years yeah. at a local restaurant on College Parkway called Mona Lisa's Restaurant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. I was the karaoke host there off and on. In fact, a, a co-worker of Roger, who's <clears> our <throat> producer, by the way, Roger is our producer. Nice hand for Roger. Does yeah. a great job. Yeah, you can hear Roger with the Stan and Haney show Monday through Friday, 2 to 6 on 96K Rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so uh, Jeff Hickox and I, uh, Jeff Hickox worked at Mona Lisa's and then he w didn't want any part of it and he gave it, turned it over to me and I worked there forever. But, yeah. Well, I'm so I'm glad I don't do karaoke. You can anymore. sing, though. You know what it's like hosting karaoke than yeah. people that take it so serious oh, yeah. that they, they come with their own little. Package. Well, I came with my own discs too. But, you know, <laughs> oh, Lord. It's right. just because you know nobody had the right version of the right oh, song. Geez, but okay. now the, the best thing is, and I used to tell these guys, you know, it's different playing with a live band because they're not perfect, and the karaoke music is always perfect, right? right? So it's a little different when you shift from karaoke over to live. How music. did you deal with that? Because you're you got your own little package. You come, I want this version, and it's got to be perfect for you to sing with it. And then you go with live musicians, which is not perfect. Tell us about that experience. Well, we ultimately ended up playing a lot of the songs I sang in karaoke over the years, but that's because I always sang the best songs, regardless. So can you, I still can play you the give best us a sample of your vocal? Um, um, well, let's see here. Well, you wake up in the morning, mm. hear that work bell ring, then they march you to the table. You see the same old thing. There ain't no food upon the table. Got no poke up in that pan. This is one of our favorites, is it? But you better not complain, boy. You get in trouble with a man. <laughs> Let the midnight That's special right. shine right on me. That's right. That's our go. All right. That's one of our favorites to do. Very good. Yeah. I was singing in the car on the way over just in case you did this. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you tested that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that song. When you guys do that, absolutely. All it takes is so his one guitar lick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sounds just like that. Yeah, it, it, exactly. <laughs> That's well, even mine doesn't sound this. <laughs> well, that must be your favorite tune. It is one of my favorites. Huh? Yeah. All the CCR is good, but the Bob Seger, too. We do Night Moves and we do Turn the oh, Page, yes. and those are two of my favorites to do, too. Right. So That's we have a ton. You get, I mean, you, know, up. you get the bikers up and dancing. Yeah, yeah. smoking in the boys' room, you name it. There's yeah. a lot of stuff kind of in a grindy little right. vocal that I love singing. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I respect that too because you know so, some you know and you're like oh that one again, but you guys actually play something different. You know the the southern rock and everything is just amazing. So I love every time uh, one of my places needs you know bike night and they say we need a band. I'm like go to River Band <laughs> because I've seen the crowd get together and love you. You know, so for me that's a reflection on the biker map. So I call mm -hmm. you guys every chance that I can. No, we thank you, yeah. and we always thank you when we're out there doing it. Live. You say you said uh, you know different music that's obscure, maybe something that people don't always hear. Yeah. Do you do you do it? One of my favorite bands growing up because I think I'm a few years older than you. I'm just guessing. I'm 67. I'll be 68 my 64. next year. So anyway, Canned Heat. Did you love? Uh, uh, you no. Know? No, we haven't done any Canned Heat. Yeah. Nobody would know it except for you and but I. But like anyway. Thin Lizzy, Dancing in the Moonlight, and oh, uh, like Whiskey song. in a Jar. So we Very do good. You know, stuff good. you don't yeah. hear all the time. How about Almond Brothers? You do um, any Almond Brothers? Yeah, yeah. One Way Out. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah, One Way Out. And well, that's okay. Good. We yeah. used to do um, another one, Almond Brothers. Midnight Rider? Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually Midnight Rider. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do that. So yeah. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in today, for sure. And uh, we really do appreciate, like I said, getting the bikers having a great time. Okay, thanks again, guys. The Calusa River Band. And we'll be back with more. You're listening to the Biker Map Live. PodcastRadioUS.com is the way to listen. And we are sponsored this episode by Superior Plumbing Solutions. Service plumbing, residential and commercial. They never compromise on quality. We'll be right back. This is what it sounds like when the doves cry. Did you win?